Hello, my name is Sean Little Bear. I'm coming to you today from Concho of America. I am a Southern Cheyenne tribal member and I am a traditional drum maker. I have been uh, making drums since about the late 90s and before that I got into it uh, in the late 80s, um, trying to find out what, what was all involved with drum making. It was born out of a, a desire to not only to sing, but to actually to be comfortable with doing what we do as tribal people, and that is to gather around the drum and have a good time and accomplish some, some things as families and as, as tribal people. I'm gonna show some of the elements of what you need to make a drum. Um, I'm gonna go over some of the things that we do, some of the little tricks and, and things that you don't find in books or in magazines. And I brought a couple of, of things that I have already made. Uh, some drumsticks, a little drum, and if we have enough time, we'll, I'll go ahead and tie this 15-inch uh, drum. That way um, you can see the actual tying of it, and I will describe uh, what it took to gather uh, what's needed. It takes a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of effort, energy, but it's not something that you can just do overnight. Uh, it took me a, about 10 years to go through an apprenticeship and then to learn from uh, master drum makers. Uh, you really got to be committed to it and it's, it's kind of a lifelong journey. I am still learning as a drum maker and I am one to tell everyone that I don't know it all. This can be done and it can be achieved in a small format. If you want to move on to the larger formats, either a, a large hand drum or a powwow drum, it's going to take more effort, more energy, more skill, uh, more of everything that you need to know. The first thing you want to do is find a drum frame. Uh, I brought a couple of examples here. Uh, these are maple shells that are formed around a circular form and then each laminate layer is built up to where your, um, your layers build up to, to a certain thickness that is able to accept the, the skin contracting around it. Uh, the smaller rim is thinner um, and has less layers than, say, one of these uh, bigger rims. This one is in a 15-inch size. Uh, this one is in a 20-inch size. And it's obviously a lot thicker, and it's, it's ready to be machined and ready for skin. This one, I have already uh, smoothed out the edges uh, with a Dremel tool, and I've stained it with some uh, waterproofing uh, urethane. So it's, it's ready to go. And when we get to this one, we'll actually put some skin on it and then I'll tie it tight. And it'll take a few days to dry, but we'll be able to show you how a drum is actually made. This one, the small one, is actually already made. Uh, it's made out of a goat, goat skin. And the, the rim for this is actually the same kind as these other two examples that I brought, but it's even thinner. There's even less layers to it. So you can use a thin hide. You can't use a real thick hide on it because it would warp or distort the rim or, or even crush it. But it has a really nice sound for a 12 inch rim. So this is made from my goat hide and it's made for um, kind of a, a smaller type, like a practice drum. If somebody wanted to use it, they could use it in a, in a smaller, uh, smaller room or, or something. 
So uh, there's not really one way to make the drums, and that's one of the things that I wanted to tell everybody out there. If you have an interest in making uh, drums, uh, drumsticks, the beaters for them, um, there are lots of different ways. And as an artist and as a in tribal individual, um, I've learned a lot from all the, the older artists and, and other tribal individuals. And I just wanted to say that you need to in interject your own personality, your own energy, your own style in everything you do. That way you make it the way you want it to be made. In learning how to do these things, you just need to learn a starting point and find out where to go to get the rims. And then later on, after you get some tools to work with, uh, these are an assortment of my scissors that I like to use and a couple of the little pliers. Um, you learn how to control the skin and make it do what you want it to do rather than have the skin dictate to you. Uh, you'll need a waterproofer or a stain or something that, that comes from woodworking um, to finish these. Uh, you can use paint brushes, you can use sponges, uh, you can use rags if you're gonna stain it. And then uh, normally what we do is urethane them so that they, uh, they don't absorb water and they won't warp afterwards. So this one has been urethaned and it has been, it has been worked and it's ready to put skin on. Uh, these two are not, they still need a lot of work. They're in the raw and they're, they are rock hard maple shells. They're not the most expensive kind, but uh, these are, would be available at all kinds of different tribal outlets as well as where you buy uh, dance and powwow items. Uh, you can actually also buy rims that are made in an octa octagonal shape and they kind of look like stop signs and they come in in different sizes from uh, 8 to 12 inch uh, up to 14 to 16 inch and then 18 to I think 24 in the smaller sizes, and then uh, you can actually get octagons all the way up to powwow size, 28 to 34, 36. Once you have your elements, um, your, your skin, and you decide that you want to have, say, a light colored skin, which is normally bleached. Um, this example is um, bleached cowhide, and then they have a natural cowhide, which is uh, just a, with its natural oils and natural color. Uh, there's a lot of different variations to these, but you want to get a skin that it doesn't have any holes, uh, doesn't have any thin spots. Um, one of the things that, that you can look at in the store is to have them unravel the hide and look at it uh, through a strong light, like a ceiling light, or a lamp. And what that will do is it'll show you the scars, uh, the little parasite um, holes, skiv marks, uh, barbed wire cuts, all of that. You want the premium hide that you can buy uh, that doesn't have holes, doesn't have the marks, uh, doesn't have uh, those things that can, that can actually make your drum split once it is dry. Uh, you want to steer away from those. Once you find out what you want, uh, procure your elements, and then we'll talk about the skills that you need to actually put it all together and make something that sounds really good. Like I mentioned earlier, I brought some of the tools that I use um, to actually cut the leather once it is, uh, it's actually not leather, it's actually raw hide. Um, once you soak the rawhide, I use a big plastic trash barrel at home um, and push the hide down into it once it starts to get pliable. And then I unroll it and I'll take some of my scissors 
this one actually does really good on cowhide. I know it's a tin snip, but believe it or not, these tin snips work really well. Um, I also use a longer version of the tin snip, but this doesn't work as good without um, um, on the thicker hides because they get kind of a slimy feel to them and you need a, a, a short stocky pair of scissors that can actually cut through the thickness of the hide and sometimes you're going to need to use both hands to cut through the, the actual hide because it's, it actually is very thick once it's soaked and it plumps up. So since we're doing just a hand drum today, um, I've already cut a pre-cut round and I've already had it soaking in some water and I've used some of these metal punches that punch holes in different sizes. And some of these are really old. I got them from actually other drum makers that kind of handed them down to me and others I bought in, in different sets. And I use this one today to start working the leather, the uh, rawhide, that we are going to use for our 15 inch drum frame. Here I have my holes punched. Um, we wor always work from the skin side in. So you always punch the skin side so you'll have a nice smooth punch on the top. On the bottom, if one of the holes grab and you have to cut it off, uh, the trim side, you want to be on the inside. So we'll work from the skin side in, uh, facing of, of the drum. We start here, and then I'll make a second punch on the other side opposite. And then I'll do the next one over here, and then the next one opposite that. That way we have four holes, and then We'll do in between those, the, the holes, make another one, and then opposite that. And then we'll go just in halves until we get 16 holes. Then I use this size to actually cut around the holes. After you pound the holes and use the scissors to cut the excess out from between your holes. Um, then you use uh, another pair of scissors to uh, cut a chunk of rawhide and you go around the edge and cut out uh, just enough to go through the holes in your lace. And then I'll go around my elbow and I'm looking for between four and a half to six and a half times. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. And there we have our lace, it's ready to go. This rawhide was actually not, uh, it was not as big as I wanted it to be. I didn't have enough uh, to cover the entire frame, which normally, that is exactly the way that I would want to do it. But I can use uh, kind of a trick to use um, a different kind of tie. That way um, I can tie the drum and it's going to have a, still have a good sound to it. And I'll be able to use the lace that I've already have with this size of round to make the drum out of. So once, once you soak your hide, um, you put the, your drum frame out on top of your rawhide and you measure it out. Ideally, you want a little bit more because it's going to shrink up. Um, so I, I usually use uh, about a, a quarter of an inch to about three-eighths of an inch over the entire rim. Um, that's going to give you a lot of gather to your rawhide but there are tricks and there are ways to, to alleviate that. So we're gonna cover some of those um, as we go on later. I can do maybe a bigger, bigger drum and I'll show you some of those, how we do those. 
Um, on this one, what I'm going to do is take some of this lace, and I know it takes an awful lot. Uh, to tie one drum, your lace should go around your drum frame about uh, four and a half to six rounds. That will make enough um, lace to go between the holes and through the center and over to the other side. And then you'll be able to go all the way around. These have been quartered. If you notice on the, the rawhide, um, there are eight holes on each side. So I have 16 sets of holes, 32 in all, because each hole is considered one. Uh, I did a double hole for each time I go through the, from the lace from one side to the other. You can go in either 8, 12, 16, 18, and 24. And that'll keep your symmetry just the same. On this one, I did a double hole, so it will, the lace will go through and it'll actually pull on this one set. So we've got 16 sets and we're gonna make a four-sided centerpiece so you can grab a hold of. And each one of those centerpieces, it will entail four holes. So once we get this all put together, you'll be able to see how um, working with a set of holes that are symmetrical will be a lot better for your project. So we're gonna go ahead and set our rim on the project. And what I like to do, first of all, is to set everything together. This is what your drum is going to be made of. Um, this would be the time to put it in the center and then you would uh, bless your project. Uh, this is very important to our traditional people because it means that not only will you, um, this drum will be used for a good purpose, it will actually bless other people that hear it. It will bless the singer that sings on it and it will uh, bring good, good things and good feelings and um, maybe an air of celebration and that this animal who gave its life will live again through your music and through your, your drumming. Now that we have everything ready to go, I've already prayed over this project. We're ready to put it together. Okay, let's get busy and we will actually put skin on this frame and I will show you a couple of the steps that need to be done. Uh, one of them is this first tie. This isn't a Native American tie. This is just an, an actual, um, what's called an ancient tie. And uh, bring this around. And then normally I take a, one of the thicker holes where the hide is really thick. And you can just feel by your, your fingers and you can find a, a set of holes that's really thick. And you wanna tie off your lace to those holes. What I like to do is go in the face. Um, the facing side means this smooth side and the inside of the skin is, is facing up. So I like to go in through the face of the hide and then make a little knot to anchor it. And then I'll come around with the rest of this lace. And I know this kind of looks like it's, you know, it may not hold the drum, but Trust me, when we're through, <laughs> it, it will hold the drum. So as we go around, this is the only one that's actually gonna go through the holes. 
And then after we get after we get this lace tied in, then the other one's going to go actually pretty quick. So all we need to do is go around with this one, and then we'll we'll start with our actual lace that we make the tie across the frame, and then the handle we'll make with the excess. We're going to go the end through the face. And back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin this lace out just a bit with my scissors so that I can tie it together. Here's where we uh, go through and make sure we have kind of like a uniform amount of slack in each of these holes. And we'll bring the ones that, that are a little bit more around to these ones that are, don't have any. And what that's going to do is that when we lace through these, it's going to allow this to come up and over the edge of the, the frame and give us a little bit more rawhide for the lace to, to grab onto. So we're about all even right there. And then we can start with this lace. And this lace, we're going to have an anchor point, which means we're gonna to need to do a little bit of trimming and then make a hole. And what this does is it makes a hole in the end of the, the lace to where you can put it through a hole and then put the lace through it and it'll anchor uh, this lace to wherever you're, you're coming, coming from. So we'll start with this anchor point. And we'll put our frame right directly in the center. And then we want to make sure it's not going to tangle up. So we're going to go through all the lace. Now you have one end that you're going to start with and this is going to be the anchor point to where you're going to anchor your lace. Since we have a hole here, we're going to count four over. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to anchor the next junction, which would be here. And then we're going to start tying the lace to the frame. Make sure you don't get knotted up. And you want to work from side to side. So you're going to go back over here and just pull the lace through. We're, we're going through this way and then pulling the lace through so that we're not going through the actual holes. We're actually going through this lace that's already in the holes. And this first time as we go around, we're not doing it real tight. It's got to be nice and loose. And we want to work opposite, so I'm going this way on this set and this way on this set of holes. So as we go around, we just follow each holes, each set of holes. Each time I pull, I grab the rawhide and I hold it in a loop for the next time, so that it's not just flying off the table and grabbing things off the floor. Now we're to the point where it's a little bit tight, 
but it's not quite as tight as we want it to be. So the final part is to actually create the handle, which will actually tighten it up even more. Here we go with handle number one. We're going to do four of these, and it should make a cross about right in the middle. I'm going to take it under and go over to this side. So we have three things, which is our, our tie up here, which we can trim up here a little bit. Then we have our anchor point over here. And then we're gonna anchor this last bit of lace in this loop. And we'll just tie it off onto itself. Yeah, these are uh, just uh, slip knots. We'll do about four of them, and then we'll trim the point, and then tuck it in. I just tucked the, the very end of the lace under the, the piece that we just pulled tight. That way it, it grabs onto itself, and uh, now, that, now that it's pretty tight, it'll actually tighten up even more as, as it dries. Uh, basically what we have here is our hand drum. It is our 15 inch with uh, steer hide, natural raw hide, and it's, it's not quite finished, but once nature gets through with it, then we'll have a nice sounding drum. I know it looked a little complex. Um, if you missed anything, you can review it online. My name is Sean Little Bear. And it's been fun doing this project with you. Ha-ho, thank you for joining us. Hey, I, I, hey.